Hey everyone, welcome to Game Launch. This series is dedicated to going to people's houses to see I've been gaming since back in the day in the 80s. So I would say what is that? 25 years. I'm in, but started started with Nintendo like most people. My parents never bought a system for me. Super NES was the first one that I actually got, but we already had Genesis. Uh, that was my father's system, Genesis. And one is my favorite right now, but Xbox. Just like the whole interface, I've been using it since it first came out, with the original Xbox. The controller setup is just intuitive. I think that Xbox brings more to the table as far as everything else. The controller, right, is generally what I gravitate to. If I have both systems, I always go towards the Xbox because of the controller, the layout of it. I feel like that's the most, and then the graphics, to me, there could be minor differences. If you don't have them side by side, I don't think you're gonna notice too much about them. But uh, I just like the easy use interface with Xbox, and that's why I stick with it. But so Dave is more into his projection wow. gaming. He set up his whole system around that concept, physical copies, instead of having digital copies, as you can see in the back here. He sets up his uh, projection on top here. He made his projection TV from scratch. Looks good. I love the digital, right, but as you can see, I have all these movies and the sound on them. If you have a receiver, you can't beat it. So even with my movies and my games, I strictly keep the hard copy of it. If you have a, a, a proper setup, it can't be matched. Just like watching a Blu-ray versus watching a regular DVD channel, that's the difference in the sound quality. I'm in a, uh, a, a surround sound um, field and then I could have a couple people sitting next to me. I could uh, picture and picture it, and then we can split the screen. It's optimized for playing video games and uh, watching some movies. Sega's so disappointing. Sega always had better games. Sega always had the more adult games, the better graphics, and the more exciting games. I think that Nintendo, in its own right, was perfectly fine, and they have a niche, and they're doing well in it, so. You know, Xbox is, is I think, video gaming, right? Everything else comes off of that. I, I think that I, I hate it on the PS1 for the longest time, even though it turned out to be pretty decent, but I think Xbox still blows it up the water and everything. So you have the projector. It's a bank 1075, under a thousand dollar projector, right? It gives you a quality picture, uh, 1080p. And then I have a screen. It's a sunny gray screen. It's an ambient light reducing screen for 3D. Gray screen, beautiful. Made the screen, did all that. And then I had my speakers are in the back ends of my bookshelf and then I, I'm using the top two speakers which are not connected to raise the height on my uh, projector and I built a little rig there, a temporary rig instead of uh, putting it into the ceiling. All my DVDs, my, my Blu-rays are taking over but I love the uncompressed uh, audio on it and then all the other DVDs. About half the collection, all the ones behind the couch are doubled up so if you look in the front these are all the ones I watched, the comedy section and dramas and all that other good stuff. You can always see the classics and I don't know if you can get it. Thundercats, <laughs> He-Man, Masters of the Universe, probably three box sets of, uh, of Aliens, love it. Every single box set that they came out with Aliens. My favorite, Jurassic Park, right? See them, Big Red Jurassic Park Collector's Edition with film, love it. I, I, I stay on MLB basketball and then I'll go to Call of Duties. No role playing, I generally do. Action role playing, I would like to call them. Grand Theft Auto, Far Cry Prime. A lot of games where you have to solve things. You know, I'm not a, I'm not like a guy who's a, like a Resident Evil type person who's just a, you know, wait for somebody to scare me, you know what I mean, type of game. It is it's exciting, but it's too boring at the same time. My son is a fan of Call of Duty. I think I have every single one of them times two back there. Um, he loves those games, so I play them a lot. Uh, but I primarily play the survival modes. That's what I find most intriguing on those. Well, I, I think this is the open world play. I think that one has the most potential. It lets you do both things. They let you accomplish something in the game. They let you build up your character, which is kind of role-playing-ish, but then they let you interact in the game in any way that you want and accomplish the missions in any various ways that you want. And I think those obviously have infinite possibilities within those within those types of games. I'm a theater guy. I have an ambient light reducing screen. It's about 120 inches. I made this from scratch. I just bought the material, put it together. All right, and then we have a full component system. That's a 7.1 Onkyo receiver, 135 high current watt, a full uh, surround setup through the speaker. I always feel bigger is better, so I have the biggest screen I could possibly put up there. Fantastic for gaming, fantastic for movies. I have uh, Xbox One, Xbox 360, I got a PlayStation 4. Anybody ever know this high definition DVD, which used to be replacing Blu-ray. All right, but I still have a lot of those movies. I collect a lot of movies, so that one's legacy pieces of equipment. 
noted there's a gaming console, TurboGrafx-16 was a system that I wanted so badly. And I'm gonna say this, that I never got to play that system or own it, but in my mind, that's the one when I was a child and I was growing up, which is the one that I fiend for. And it never, it never did anything after that, but that's the one that, I, that was supposed to blow all the other ones out of the water, and that's the one I always wanted. That's the system that eluded me. Gamer tag, Dr. Stats Inc. You'll find me on Xbox. Uh, I don't even have a gamer tag for PlayStation. Like I said, it just sits there collecting dust. PlayStation. MLB. Nintendo. Super Mario Brothers. Xbox. Primal, baby. Far Cry Primal. Xbox One. Handheld. Handheld game? Uh, I wasn't fortunate enough to afford any handheld games. <laughs> I didn't have any, so I can't even name a game on handheld. Me and my friends, we were uh, coming home from school. My two friends were like, uh, you know, they were going to go to this place in Queens, the story of Busy B, right, to go get some games. And they were going to pick up the latest games, right? And we would always get on the bus from the Bronx to go over to Queens. When they came back, I had asked them. They always come back for games. I'm like, wait, what games did you get? And both of them, they were like, oh, well, you know, we didn't get any games. They didn't have anything. Come to find out 15 years later, right, the story comes out when we're drinking one day about that time that they went down there and one of them randomly says they got robbed. And they were so embarrassed they didn't want to tell me what happened, so I had to find out 10, 15 years later in a drunken conversation. The fact that it took them 15 years to tell me was the kicker. I knew, I knew something had to be up because I knew we were there. I, it, was, it was a release and, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. I was so surprised when they came back with no games.